Chapter 1. The Viewing The hissing rain traveled across the darkness above the old secluded church, faster than the rumors about the death that had brought them together. Inside, under the soft glow of candlelight, Winston Fifth slumped in a pew next to his wife Charlotte. The fate of his grandchildren weighed on his mind more than that of the person in the casket, a few feet in front of them. It pained Winston to be at the funeral, and away from his grandson. He feared it might put him in danger, but he had to think of his granddaughter, too. They had been waiting for the viewing service to start for over an hour. With every passing minute, Winston grew warier of coming out of hiding and into the open, among the very people most likely to recognize them. What's more, he hated leaving Marcus behind again, and lying to do it. He trusted their son, Caleb, and his wife, Annabelle. But every time they left Marcus behind with them, it increased the chances of someone finding him and taking him away like his sister. They loved Marcus like their own son. But there were many other reasons why they couldn't let that happen, no matter the cost. Raindrops ran down the faces of the flaming phoenixes depicted in the stained glass like a flood of tears. The quaint church that lay hidden deep in the mountains on the other side of the pines. The murmur outside was like white noise quieting the feelings of those who waited for the viewing services to start. They had been waiting for an opportunity like this for the last year. Despite Winston's misgivings, Charlotte persuaded him to go along anyway. We shouldn't be here, Winston said. Someone a few pews away looked at him, and he turned away, hiding his face. And what? Pass up this chance, the one opportunity we've had to find Ellie? It's been a year, Winston, and— Winston held a finger to her lips. Don't say my name, and not here. Charlotte scowled and pushed his hand aside. We have nothing to show for the last year, and this presents itself. We couldn't ignore our best lead, could we? I don't like going back on our word to Marcus, Winston said. Like clockwork, Charlotte's purse trembled between them. There's another one, Charlotte said, unzipping her purse and removing a letter that had just materialized. At this rate, you'll have to buy me a bigger bag. With Ellie being gone so long, Winston had asked Charlotte to find Marcus an outlet to express himself, a way for him to still feel connected to his sister despite her absence. She told him, when he had strong feelings to get them out, to write them down and either keep the letter, or if he didn't want anyone to read it, throw it into the fireplace. Of course, he threw every single one into the flames. He would share his feelings without any evidence. No one would be the wiser. But, unbeknownst to Marcus, Charlotte had charmed his fireplace, allowing her to collect every letter that he burned. It was a way to keep tabs on his state of mind. The bag shook again, and Charlotte covered it with her hand so the letter wouldn't launch out of her purse like a pop-tart. Another one, Winston whispered as he zipped her purse. Must be a particularly rough day. This did nothing to improve Winston's mood. Marcus always wrote more when his grandparents missed a check-in time, a deadline, or some other promise. Marcus knew they weren't coming. We are only doing what's necessary to find Ellie and reunite our family. Charlotte tugged the black veil that hung over her face from her wide-brimmed hat. If Marcus had been there, he would have joked she looked like an evil bee-catcher. But he wasn't. And that was for the best. Disguise or not, their enemies might still have detected him. I know, Winston said, as he smoothed his irritating beard and mustache in place to make room for the fake glasses Charlotte made him wear. He could remember a time when he needed to wear glasses. He had forgotten how uncomfortable they were. I wouldn't have agreed to this if there had been another way. Then you can't blame me for... A voice sounded from the pulpit. All arise. The congregation whispered and pointed fingers as they stood. Mumbles about the speaker and rumors about how the deceased had died. It was generally believed to be a mystery. A tall, veiled woman folded her Asian robes in front of her as she waited behind the pulpit, opposite the deceased, 
Ornate silks and cloths bearing curious signs and symbols draped the casket. Esmeralda was her name, she began as she got to her feet, but everyone knew her as friend. Winston lowered his gaze and whispered, If Elba knew we were here, she would kill us herself. If you keep talking, Charlotte whispered, she will. Now hush. After clearing her throat, Elba, the crypt keeper for their kind, glowered at the cleverly disguised Charlotte and Winston Fifth. Her love for magic and its mysteries knew no bounds. Her zest for life was only overshadowed by the legacy she left behind. A hush fell over the gathering when Elba said legacy. It was as if what might happen next would be of some particular interest or benefit to them. Perhaps the real reason they all had come. She may no longer be with us in the flesh, but I will go with her. I will walk with her in death, and there I will show her new life. The attendees breathed a collective, disappointed sigh. You may visit Esmeralda now, and say a few brief words. She would have wanted it that way. At that point I'll walk with her and she can rest. By the family's request, the casket will remain closed. You may now pay your respects to her memory before I carry her abroad. Grieving visitors filed out of the pews to form a line in front of the casket. Winston recognized many of them, and as they visited with each other, he longed to catch up with them too, but knew he couldn't. He remembered better days. Charlotte stared past the windows. Winston blinked. The nerves on his back tingled at the thought that someone might recognize him. It had been so many years since everyone had gotten together as a family, let alone friends. He couldn't even recall the last time they had seen Esmeralda, Mirella's sister. He sniffed. It must have been years since they'd seen her side of the family. Winston tensed as someone breathed on his neck. You two shouldn't be here, a man's voice grumbled. The stranger pointed something in his back. Judging by how still and silent Charlotte was, he assumed she felt something too. Don't turn around. This is a church, started Winston. A funeral, no less. Who? Don't speak, the voice added quickly. If you follow my instructions, I won't have to make a scene. Though I assume your former friends and family would appreciate only having to make one trip to a funeral. While the man had apparently made a joke, Winston thought he heard him choke up rather than snigger. Charlotte must have noticed it, too. She looked at Winston for some kind of understanding. Stay perfectly still. The man coughed and regained his composure. I know who you are. And I'm here to tell you how to avoid any unwanted attention. Winston raised a finger. Why don't we? I don't have the time or the patience to warn you again, understand? The man slapped Winston on the head, startling Charlotte. Several people in the congregation looked around for the source of the slapping sound. After a moment, they returned to their business. See that young man over there, sitting alone at the end of the first pew? Charlotte leaned in for a better angle. Don't turn your head, the man interjected. If you didn't know, that's Gunnar, your nephew. As you might imagine, the loss of his mother Esmeralda has left him in shambles. No one to turn to, nowhere to go. He needs somewhere to stay. What are you saying? Winston whispered. I said don't speak, the voice repeated. Now I'm going to slowly remove my weapon from your back, but I'm still here. If you want to avoid a scene here or at home, you'll find it in the goodness of your heart to put family first. In a normal circumstance, Winston would have no problem making short work of whoever this person was, but he couldn't blow this chance to locate Ellie. If this man was dangerous... Winston didn't want to put his family at risk either, so he complied and sat in silence. Moments became minutes. At some point, the slight pressure in Winston's back disappeared. 
He fought the urge to speak, and he didn't dare turn around until the line at the casket had turned over several times. Winston slowly looked over his head. When no sharp rebuke came, he spun around, only to find an empty pew. Whoever accosted them had escaped as quietly as he appeared. Winston turned to Charlotte when she took a deep breath. She had been watching Gunnar for some time, and hadn't moved since the strange voice threatened them. Gunnar wore a black leather jacket, and the wallet in his back pocket hung from a chain connected to his belt. He rested his face in his hands. Who was that? Her gaze never left Gunnar. No idea. Besides, it doesn't matter now. He's gone, Winston said. Winston regarded Gunnar. No, absolutely not. The idea of taking that boy home with us is out of the question. Don't forget why we are here in the first place. Who? What? We are trying to protect. What if that person makes good on his threat? Charlotte asked. Right here, right now. Or worse, she swallowed hard. At home. Hard to do if you're not here, Winston said as he stood to go get in line. The man is gone. Don't be so naive, Charlotte responded as she followed him. How do you know? And if the man is gone, where has he gone to? For all we know, he could be right here among us. You of all people know what our enemies are capable of. We can't risk it. Winston adjusted his belt. I can't allow it. They didn't speak while waiting. Winston massaged the tension from his hands. Charlotte wiped her nose. He didn't like feeling at odds with her. Clearly, the man knew who they were. Did he know why they were there? That would be troubling indeed. The thought made an icy tingle run down Winston's arm. Excuse me? Another voice said. Winston froze a moment despite the voice being polite and timid this time. At least it wasn't that stranger's voice. Excuse me, but uh, how did you know her? Winston turned to find Gunner, standing in line behind them. My mother, I mean. Winston glanced at Charlotte. He thought he could see through her black veil, perceive the angst in her eyes. He had to be strong. Winston opened his mouth to say something, but Charlotte broke out into frantic, uncontrollable sobs and cut him short. I'm so sorry to have upset you, Gunner began running a hand through his gelled, jet-black hair. I should have known better than to ask. I guess I was hoping to exchange a memory or two. My counselor says it helps with the grieving. With that, he turned away and muttered something to himself about relatives. Charlotte cursed under her voice. That was close. You're lucky I can turn on the tears. That must have been why I married you. Excuse me. A woman said as she approached the pedestal, cleared her throat, and tapped the microphone. Is this thing on? Her olive skin and dark hair were all too familiar to Winston. He could not have hoped for a better outcome. This was why they were here. I'd like to say a few words about my sister, Mirella said, who is survived by me, my gentle brother Quinn, and my loving nephew, Gunner. Gunner hung his head. My sister used to tell me, Mirella tapped the mic, that her greatest fear was death. And yet I've never seen someone face death so bravely and unselfishly. The visitors stopped their chatter and gave Mirella their undivided attention. It was as if Mirella was about to reveal Esmeralda's cause of death. A juicy bit of gossip. As some of you know... I'm here today at great personal risk, Mirella said, not only because of my sister, but because I need your help. And so does Esmeralda. An undertone of confusion echoed throughout the chapel. The visitors hung on Mirella's every word. If any of you... She stopped and swallowed hard. I hate to mention it, but I have to, you see. Mirella took a deep breath. If anyone knows the whereabouts of any shadow magic, I'd ask that you please contact me. The slightest bit, mind you, 
Quinn shot up and grabbed Mirella by the shoulders, pulling her away from the microphone. Please excuse the outburst, Elba said quickly into the microphone. Esmeralda's passing has affected us all differently. Mirella's upset and clearly doesn't know what she's saying. What does this mean? Winston whispered to Charlotte, who too looked confused. Asking for forbidden magic so openly. I don't know, but we've got to get to her, Charlotte said, pointing at a series of people emerging from the shadows behind the pulpit. They drew Mirella in, and she was gone. Winston put his hand gently on Charlotte's arm and lowered her pointing finger. Under normal circumstances, this might have caused a scene, but at this moment, in the chaos, there was nothing but confusion. Elba cleared her throat as she leaned over the microphone. Let's settle down and remember why we are here, thank you very much. Given the circumstances, we'll stop offering comments at the microphone. Please pay your respects quickly, so that I may walk with Esmeralda. There is no sense in keeping her waiting. Come on, we should get to Marcus, Charlotte said, her voice failing. We've lost our only opportunity. Winston wasn't listening. He moved toward the casket as the visitors disbanded, disturbed. Something that Mirella said bothered him. Winston? He ignored her and approached the copper casket embossed with protective sigils for the afterlife and adorned with the silk sashes of the Dunbar. He ran a hand along the casket's cover, touching its careful craftsmanship, doing his best to be subtle and natural. He lifted the lid and peered inside. The lid came crashing down, and Winston barely pulled his fingers away in time. Closed casket. Elba's rigid arm pinned her hand atop the casket, firm, fixed, and immovable. Winston said nothing. He bowed, pivoted, and hurried to the door. A shiver shot down his spine as he felt Elba's gaze tracking him. Charlotte joined him, whispering, Why did you do that? That was too risky. Winston sighed. Unfortunately, I was right. I just don't understand it. What do you mean? The casket was empty.